Hello everybody, and today we are looking at a Williams System 6 CPU board. This belongs to a Firepower game, and the owner has made a significant attempt at getting this working. You can see they've replaced... I mean, these, these header pins are always terrible. They've put new header pins on. I think it's done all, actually. So, you know, header pins are all in good condition. Um, he's replaced some sockets. He's put um, an MV RAM on instead of the original. And I'm not sure. I think you might have upgraded the ROMs as well. You know, it's not it's not bad. In fact, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, as, as far as hobbyists go, this is pretty pretty decent actually. Not not bad at all. A little bit of a clean up needed around that. Some flux excess flux around that CPU. Other than that, yeah, that's you know that's pretty so cleanly soldered. So uh, that you know that's good. It's it's always of you know nice to start on a, a board that's in fairly good condition rather than one that's been hacked up. So okay, right. So we've connected up the. Uh, the Williams test rig on system 3 to 6 mode. Um, just make sure it's connected properly. We'll power it up and see what it does. Oh, right, yeah, nothing pretty much. LEDs are both stuck on. I assume it's not going to respond to the diagnostic button. Nothing on the displays. Let me just reboot that. Yeah, totally dead. There's no display outputs at all. As expected, it doesn't look like it's running. Uh, right, so we'll have to go through the basics and see if we can get this thing to boot. Okay, a minor thing I can see here is we've got a insufficient solder joint there on that pin there. This is on the um, NVRAM chip, or the socket for the NVRAM. Yes, yeah, so we can see that's that one there. Maybe this top one as well, a little bit, but not so much. Uh, I think the others are okay. Again, that one there looks a little dry. No, it's not too bad. That that one there definitely is an insufficient uh, solder joint, though. Okay. Um, also, this socket here concerns me a little. Um, that pin there looks like it's damaged. It's not going to come. It's not going to have very good contact at all. So I think we might have to change that socket. Um, yeah, the game's not. CPU seems to be running at least partially, but we're not getting the output. So let's go check the PIA out first. Okay, so I've put a brand new CPU and a brand new PIA in temporarily. Um, I've also taken out all the RAMs, and the game kind of boots up, and the the LEDs are no longer lit up permanently. It's not responding to uh, diagnostic. Um, just checks the basically checks all the pins on the CPU. Uh, pins thirty to thirty three on the original CPU were stuck low. I'm not sure if that was a CPU or the PIA. I need to trace that out further. But with this CPU and this PIA, those are no longer stuck. So I suspect one of the two were on the original board are faulty. But we're still not in a booted state yet. This RAM chip here is missing a leg. Um, also, not sure. That looks a little dodgy underneath there. Like there's some corrosion or something. I've soldered on a new leg to replace the missing one, and we'll give that another try. I'm not sure if those RAMs work at all because the lights are back on when they are in. Okay, so I've been trying to track down why this is basically locked up and not booting. Um, and basically, we've got some problems with the address lines. So this this is uh, basically a buffer between the CPU and the address bus. Um, let's just get the right pin. So we've got an input address line there from the CPU. And then the output's dead. Same with another one. Output's dead. Working and dead. So yeah, we've got um, four, I think five actually dead address lines on the out output of this buffer. Uh, this is one of those old 1897s. I think we can replace that with a 367, so we'll give that a try. Right, so I fit the 367, and that was a success. The board is now booting with the test run. We're getting the flashing of the LEDs, uh, so we can refit the RAMs now. I just need to uh, basically reflow this header here. There's a couple of pins that need sorting out, and uh, once we've done that, we'll put the RAMs in and see if we can do a RAM test. Well, that's interesting. This um, MV RAM thing doesn't actually work. You get the uh, LED stuck on with that in place. Um, I'm just going to take that out now and just check that these two RAMs are okay. Yeah, so I've removed that NVRAM thing and uh, it's booting up again. So the LEDs are flashing. So this, this um, what's it called? I think it's called any, any RAM? Yeah, any pin. Yeah, this any pin one doesn't seem to work. Um, what I'll do, I'll see if I've got any of my Arcade UK ones in stock. Or actually, I'll, I'll just stick a, a normal RAM in first just to see if we can get it to boot up with a normal RAM. Um, should I have one of them lying around? 
Uh, yeah, with a normal 5101 in place, it's booting up again. We'll stick a run test on. That looks a bit odd. Do that again. No, nope, that's fine. No RAM faults. Yeah, that NVRAM module does not work. What we'll do is I'm going to put these, uh, the old CPU and PIA back in one at a time, see if it boots. And these these probably aren't necessary, to be honest. I'm assuming uh, these will either work or one of them works. Remember, this socket's a bit messed up, so I'm going to replace that now while I'm uh, swapping chips back. Right, the socket's been replaced. It was an absolute nightmare to replace that socket. It kept blocking my desoldering iron up. The solder on the other side was really gunky, even after I tried cleaning it up. Um, so that's been done. Anyway, I was right that one of these two chips was dead. The PIA is actually dead. See, so we've got the lock up again. So I'm going to put a new PIA back in and hopefully it should start flashing again. Okay, so I was right. Yep, so new new PIA in and the LEDs are flashing again. So old PIA, time for the bin. Right, so it looks like the CPU board is now mostly working. Just check the run test again. So... The next step, I've got the driver board here as well, so we'll, we'll test the driver board out first, run through all the tests, and then we will put the, um, the, the original ROMs back on again and test the game with the tester, which is currently switched off. Now, the owner of the board has supplied a second NVRAM, so this one is the, uh, the dead one. And I've put that one on, and that one is working fine. So I've put the uh, game ROMs in, and it's not booting up at all. Let's just put the power on. We're just getting the two light lock. So uh, further investigation needed around the CPU to see what's going on. I just stuck my working blackout ROM set into the board, and we've still got the locked up LEDs. So we've got something further to investigate, possibly a address decoding issue, basically accessing the ROMs. Uh, we know it definitely works with the test ROM in place, but it's not working. You know, I also put all the ROMs in and the test ROM, and it still was able to run. So, hmm, let's have a further look into it. I'm sure there's something wrong with these RAM sockets here, as when I poke around with the Logic Probe on them, I actually managed to get the LEDs to go out, and then I can press the diagnostic button and get the double flash that everything's okay. But the game is not currently running. The display looks like that. So I think I'll have to replace these sockets. They do look pretty crappy to be honest. Well it is problem after problem with this board. Um, I've ended up replacing the CPU socket as the original one seemed to be a bit intermittent when I moved the CPU around so that's been done. Um, it's just just not still not working so I've got the test run back in. Uh, if we fire it up again so we get the flash sequence, RAM test fine And there we go, yeah. But it still will not boot the game. So, um, looks like I've got a laborious task of manually checking the continuity between pretty much everything. So all the ROM sockets. Uh, I'm also potentially concerned about this because uh, the pins on this board I don't think are long enough. So I might have to take them off and put the proper style on because I'm not sure if it's making good contact. I mean, I think it is. And I've tried wiggling it, trying to boot the ROM. It still doesn't boot, so uh, I'm getting annoyed with this one. But I've got to get it finished. I don't like abandoning repairs, so we'll somehow get it done eventually. Right, well, I've decided I'm going to replace these pins. Um, even if it's not the problem, I can't imagine this can be reliable in a pinball machine because it's just about making contact by about one millimeter. So let me see if I can just get this lined up so we can see. So. So if I rest that on the board, you can see just how different the height is. This is, I don't know, probably ten, probably ten mil, eight to ten millimeters higher. This one here. So I'm gonna have to take these off and put these on. These are these are the actual genuine ones that you would normally get on these. Right, so there we go, the new pinhead has been fitted, we'll give it a try. I don't think that's going to be the actual problem, this was just done for the sake of reliability. Um, but after that, we'll test that, and then we'll go on to the ROM sockets next. Okay, so I've verified every pin on these three ROMs here, I have continuity to the buffers, well the drivers, and then to the drivers to the CPU. So everything checks out there, I've also checked it for shorts between 
uh, adjacent pins. Again, no shorts, so everything checks out. Um, not sure what to move on to next at this minute. Right, the test ROM's back in. Test code's running fine. Let's hook the scope. Oh, I want to do this off camera a sec. Which we get right, right. So I've looked up to that'll be address line one, I think. Let's take a quick look at the scope. That does not look right. So we've got a bit of noise appearing. Um, we're on two volt div, right? So see those triangular bumps to the right hand side? They're approximately two volts. So zero to two volts. That's not valid logic. I don't know what that is. There's some crap on the data bus, effectively. Then we've got these really slowly ramping up signals, big arced curves there over the top, and these are uh, flickering noise. That just looks like a right mess. So it looks like something funny on the data bus. I mean, that that, that invalid logic there, the, the spikes, that, that can't be good. That's got to be interfering with the, the real signals. Right, so what I've done is I've tried to eliminate problems by isolating things on the data bus. All we've got in is the test ROM, CPU, and the PIA on the CPU board. We've disconnected the driver board, taken the ROMs out, uh, ROM, yeah, the other ROMs out, the RAMs out, and the uh, battery back RAM here. So let's just pick a data line. That one there will do. And look at that. That is much more normal scope picture there. We've got some straight lines rather than big arcs interleaving as we had before. That looks kind of reasonable now. Let's just try another one. Yep, again, looks fairly reasonable. That looks reasonable. All straight lines. So, I think something's dragging the data bus down on that driver board. Let's try a different driver board, if I've got one handy. Right, I've got a different driver board fitted now I know that he's working uh, and we've got the, the horrible scope pictures again with overlapping lines let's try a different one yeah this just looks messy and the uh, the rise on the signal looks terrible it's like in big arcs I'm wondering if the data bus drivers are duff on this and that might be the problem that's uh, pretty annoying um, as I think these are well, they're near impossible to get these. Uh, we might have to do the jumpering. Uh, if we're going to jumper uh, the data bus drivers, though, we're going to have to actually go for the single ROM rather than the original ROMs. There's, there's no way we can run all all six ROMs off the off with no buffers. So uh, right, let's check those out. Okay, here's a working CPU board that's booted up with normal game code, and um, that's what we should see. That looks kind of reasonable. Not the cleanest signals in the world, but that is booting and working, and they are fairly straight. So, let's try the same with the dodgy CPU board. So, uh, ROMs and RAM are back in, let's have a look. So, in theory, this should be running, but it isn't. Um, and the scope picture is all over the place. I think we're going to have to try maybe jumping these buffers. So I'm getting uh, fairly confident that there's something wrong with these buffers. Let me just get on the pin. So that's on the CPU side. So, okay, you know, it looks fairly calm. Let's go on to the, uh, the board bus side. Jumpy, horrible, and conflicty signal. So I think this is not driving the signal properly on the board side. CPU bus side. Seems to be okay, looks a lot cleaner. Let's uh, try jumping one of these. Right, so I've removed and jumpered the data bus drivers, and I've just got that balancing there on one of the uh, data signals, and it's a lot calmer now. So it's done something, but it's still not running code. It's still frozen. Uh, that's dropped off now. It's driving me mad, this. So they definitely needed doing, well, at least it seems that they needed, because like I say we've got. Um, Certainly nicer looking, uh, I don't know if that's an address or a data bus, that one. Yeah, it's looking looking more sensible now. But something on here is still bad. Right, I've been having a bit of a break from this board as it's been driving me crazy. Anyway, 
Let's give an update on what we've done. So we've replaced the chip in the, the 4020 in the timer circuit as we're getting a weak signal like that. That improved things a little bit, but it still wasn't running code. So what we did next was we replaced the two RAMs here, which are the 6810s. And now the old ones, they passed the RAM test with the Leon test ROM, but something was obviously wrong with them because they weren't 100% working. Anyway, let's just cycle power it up. So there we go, that's the sort of display we're expecting to see. Just do a reset. And there you go, that's running in a track mode, it's cycling between the high score and zero. So let's just see if we can get to test mode. That's all it's not test mode. Sorry, one second. Turn the switch on. There we go. Oops. Not an automatic. Yeah, there we go. So it's doing a display test. So that's working fine now. Just do the test. And we've got the normal flash. Okay, so that's looking good. So, uh, the final solution for the outstanding problems were, well, we obviously had to do a lot of resoldering with some bad connections. We solved that. We've replaced the timer and replaced these two RAMs. Now I'm just going to check to make sure I'm going to put the old ones in one at a time to see which one is faulty if it's just one. But it's weird how they were passing the Leon RAM test absolutely fine. Um, but simply replacing those has now got it booting. Okay, so it's this RAM that's bad. I'll just check the other one out. This one's okay. So we only need to charge for the one. But this one has stopped the game from booting. We've now got no activity and nothing going on on the displays. So that is definitely bad, even though it passes the RAM test. How very strange. Right, so one new, one old RAM. That's the working one. And just check out the display. And we're back in track mode again. Cycling between the high score. So this appears to be working. This board has taken an insane amount of time to get working for such a simple board. But it was... Uh, a number of faults combined with lots and lots of bad soldering, which is, you know it looked good in the in the first instance, but when we when we looked at like the uh, the tops the top side on the solder side, we could see that the solder hadn't actually gone through the through holes and there were tracks that were open on the top. So uh, we had to do a lot of rework on this. Anyway, so that's running with the uh, the blackout ROM just to get that working. Uh, now we need to see if we can get the firepower ROMs and ROMs working again. Right, so got the firepower ROMs in, let's give it a fire up. So we've got the, we're in, we're in sort of diagnostics because there's no battery on. Um, so what we need to do is cycle the power. Oh, we didn't do it fast enough. And ew, my display does not like that. I'm not sure what's working now. Let's just put the, that's the test switch. Ah, thinks we've got a bad ROM now does not like that. Okay, so these firepower ROMs do not work. So what we're going to have to do next is we'll have to do the single ROM conversion for firepower. Um, let's do that now. So the modifications have been done to the back side of the PCB and I've burnt the new combo ROM. Combo ROM has been fitted and boot it up and we're in test mode and we're cycling for a display test. So that looks like it's working successfully. We'll just come out of that. And back into the track mode. So I think we're all working. Right, the last thing to do is to reinstall the NV RAM and check if that's working. So we'll give it a power up. And it is, we've gone straight into a track mode without going into diagnostics. So that NV RAM is now working. That is the second one, the first one that was in there didn't work.